11, no it isn't, it's 10, 18. You're He's wishing the day away. <laughs> <laughs> On GB News with uh, Andrew Pisbeau. Turner Malone is here, Cal Malone, <laughs> writer and broadcaster, <laughs> and author Nick, Nikki Hodgson. Um, Cal, you've got a story in the front page of the Daily Mail, which yeah. you want to work, because Nikki's got feel, a little confession coming. I feel I have coming. very little to say on this story, because I think <laughs> Nikki's going to shock the nation in about three and a half seconds. But I will just say, this is a story on the front page of the Mail, and it's saying that at least a dozen MPs and their staff and, um, and political journalists have been targeted in what we think is a sinister cyber honey trap scam. Now, I don't even know what that means, I've got to tell you. I'll tell even... you what it means. Yeah. <laughs> it means that, Nikki, explain if I've got this right or wrong, but basically somebody uh, masquerading probably as some 24-year-old yeah. yeah, potty yeah, yeah. has sent an email to MPs saying, oh, I'm a big fan of yours and yeah. um, I love what you did on this occasion. They've yeah. picked a few salient facts to make it plausible. And, and then send said, a new photo. I'll well, send you a photo. And some yeah. of these idiotic MPs have then sent dirty yeah. photos back. Oh, why would you? Really? I mean, why goodness would you me. Do because it's so... because the, the number of MPs who've been caught out thinking this 24-year-old beauty <laughs> finds this 72-year-old MP right. <laughs> if you're that, That's the problem. If you're that stupid, you really shouldn't be representing... No, absolutely. Have you not been to Parliament lately? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, crikey. Yes, you've been hey, alone. I mean, go on, Nikki, you've got a little bit of experience <laughs> in this area. Area. Well, what I was going to say is this story is ridiculous. This is not the threat. It's not other people trying to entrap MPs. It's MPs doing the dirty with other people in Parliament, etc. And the reason I can say this is because I've got first-hand knowledge. I had a fling with the Tory MP, who's still sitting, many years ago when I was single. Um, I don't know if he was, actually. Uh, but he invited me to Portcullis House to the tea room for a cup of tea. That's what I really did think. You really thought I met him in... working. We worked We worked okay. on a show together. So and I just thought, oh, we just now, yeah, talking about politics. Be honest here. <laughs> did you think you were going for tea? Or did you... You must have got I an didn't. idea. Like, that Carol, I swear to God, I've never been so shocked in my life. And I'm not easy to shock, because I'm an ex-dominatrix. People so what, so have what, shocked what, me in what, other ways. What, what, was, in, was he instantly <laughs> not talking about his... Yes, he was instantly okay. talking dirty to me in the, in the tea room. In Parliament, there's everybody else sitting around, yeah. and I just wanted to sink into the chair. And then I was like, well, what? hang on, maybe this could be fun. He's why didn't, you, why didn't you slap his chops when he was doing that? Because you found him attractive. It was, it was kind of funny, and I was like, well, this will make a good story at some point. As, as, as <laughs> she just <laughs> explained she's an ex-dominatrix. <laughs> Nothing scary. <laughs> I mean, I like, I like a cheap thrill. I, I like a cheap thrill. Anyway, so we went up to his office. It was the afternoon, everybody's still working. What, the same day? Oh, yeah. Ooh, but that's you how it started. Why not? I don't oh my care. God. I was a single girl in London. I could do what I want. Are we anyway, naming so him? on his are sofa. We, are we naming this guy? That no. You know? I mean, you can find out who it is, fair, so but he's same, well known. So the same day you went to you went to his office and had sex him on his sofa. Yeah, and the floor actually. But the carpets are horribly scratchy. In there. Right. I don't well, that's recommend very it. Important fact. Well, uh, <laughs> and then, um, but then the, the hilarious thing is afterwards he said to me, "We've got the tube." Sort of halfway back home together, and oh. he said, "But Nikki, total discretion." And it's like. Come on, you do not have sex with the journalist in your office if you don't want them to tell anybody. Oh, so he was then asking, this Nobody's is between you and I off the record. Like, come on, you know I'm going to tell everybody so about this at some point. Yeah, but you didn't even get a nice, lavish well, dinner got, on we, the terrace. I didn't want a dinner with him. He's not that interested. Or a cab home, even. No, oh, like, yes, a cab home would have been nice. Yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw him a couple more times. He still texts me every now and again, asking... To have a but I coffee. Guess, I guess the moral, <laughs> the moral to the story is that these often these men are weak-willed, yes. promiscuous, and also exploit, and exploit their position. And exploit their position. He knew, he knew very well that. Did you feel exploited, or did you exploit? No, them? because I mean, you don't well, sound like. I think it sounds mutually exploitative. Yeah. Because you have thing, written about it. Yes, I have written about it. And the thing that annoyed me is that he actually said to me uh, a few months later, "Well, I need a date for the Buckingham Palace garden party, but I couldn't possibly take you." And <gasps> I was so offended. That's why. That's the reason I've, I've outed him. I wouldn't do otherwise. But the thing I'm is, perfectly respectable. I can wear a nice frock and look why elegant. Why you? What because he was obviously he was embarrassed. He's like, oh, you write about sex for a living. It's like you're the one that wanted to have a sh parliament. Oh, sorry. Apologies for the language again. If anybody's <laughs> watching at home and had an issue, that's two swear words we managed to drop this morning. I'm very sorry if that was offensive to you. Um, I, I... Well, we're both quite. <laughs> <laughs> we're very bond up, Andrew and I. We're very old-fashioned, you, you know. I was brought up by my parents said. You shouldn't even have a kiss on the first day. Let alone have full <laughs> Me set. It, it wasn't a, a date, was it? I didn't think it was a date. I was, it was an opportunity. I guess, I guess at the end of the day, um, he wasn't exploiting you. You were exploiting him. Well, he was yeah. mutually exploitative. Because you kind of knew you were going to write about it, I'm guessing. Um, and when he turned out to be such an idiot, I mean, you were definitely Oh, yeah, I mean, he hung himself by his own And did you, you just said before, you wrote about, you, you wrote about sex for a living. Yeah. yeah, and he knew that. Yeah, but that's well, not, that doesn't mean I'm up for it, does it? It just means well, that that's no, my professional... Well, you clearly were that day. <laughs> I don't want to point out the obvious, but you clearly were that day. But well, since you subsequently have named this person in public, although we're not doing it on the show today, mm. what was his reaction to you then? No reaction. He just pretends that everything's, you know, fine. It's that, you know, don't... 
And, so he's just not reacting. And of course, nothing happened to him either, which is astonishing. No, it you is think astonishing. He'd yeah. Be, um... well, if it, yeah, because I, I'm sure the sergeant, the rules of the sergeant aren't the department. <laughs> you can't be doing the, that sort of thing. I, so. I yeah. bet they don't. But, but what if somebody had walked into his office, his secretary? His I mean, I think he locked the door. I, I wasn't really paying attention. By that but point. I guess the point for this story today is, if it does transpire that these MPs have sent naked pictures or had what might be deemed inappropriate communications with these cyber spies, mm -hmm. what happens to them? Well. They deserve to be... I would think they deserve to be publicly exposed for doing that. On the, yeah. but not necessarily because of the nude picture, because of their stupidity yeah. and their, in a bit, their, their bad judgment. Absolutely. Why would you ever do that? Because they're easily you're, flattered. But, yeah. Yes, they are. But knowing you're easily flattered is one thing, but, you know, all of us can be easily flattered. You know, if, you know, if all of us were, especially Nicky, if you got <laughs> a naked photograph of, say, David Gandhi on the phone, <laughs> you might respond. He's a supermodel. Like, he's a she doesn't mean, she doesn't mean the for. Gandhi. Just to uh, be clear. No, not that. <laughs> although, <laughs> although, <laughs> although he did sleep with naked women to, to, pro to yes, prove his resolve. But anyway, that's by the way. Um, yeah, you might send one back on the basis that he's to die for. But, but most MPs would know that this job they have, and they would know especially that their constituents would be horrified at the uh, thought of them yeah. having sex. And well, wasting the... time in you know, There was an yeah. Essex MP, I'm not going to name him because it's long gone now, but he waited years to become a minister, finally gets the call, he's promoted to be a minister. He's had a few drinks, he's, he's in his office and he's getting texts from a 23-year-old blonde, mm. sends lots of photographs, encourages him to send photographs of his manhood. Oh, yes. my word. And he was one of the shortest lived ministers <laughs> in political history. And he waited all those years <laughs> to get the job. I mean, and look, it, was, it didn't yeah. occur to him that no. the promotion that day and the photograph, the, the entrap... It Were was entrapment. It was entrapment. No coincidence. Oh. Didn't... This oh. is the problem. Oh. The, pa the power goes to their heads. And I do think there was an element of the guy that I uh, was with. I, I think he wanted to get caught. He wanted to take it right up to the line where his... There was, there was a kind of danger there because it creates a friction well, for people. Well, look at Matt Hancock in lockdown. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Clearly, yes. No, no consequences for him. No, no. Well, nothing. Well, well kind of happened. There wasn't right, the form of time. <laughs> well, He's like, finished. He went into the yeah. Uh, yes, he went he the job, he made a lot of it. money, yeah, and he lost his, his, his government job and all the rest of it, and quite rightly he did. And that's what should happen, you know, if you do that stuff, yeah. there should be a consequence and they should know what that consequence is. He was still sat there in the House of Commons, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's still, well, he's still there. He's still there. He's standing down at the election. I mean, I guess, I guess what he said was, I'm in love with uh, this Ugh. woman. The, the terrible, terrible <sighs> lies. But he, but he, he uh... lost the whip over something else. It wasn't to do with his sexual we... shenanigans. He lost his ministerial job. Didn't he get accused of um, something or other? Yeah. By, um, I can't remember. It wasn't bullying. What was Right. I, I, I'm feeling a little queasy now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we move on? I am, because talk... I know exactly who the MP is, and I just have to say, Nikki, <laughs> I don't share your taste. Well, um, I don't know who it is, but I will be Googling straight up. <laughs> <laughs>